Okay, so having derived these alignments on each of the training examples, the next step is to extract phrases from each uh, training example. Remember, a, a phrase or a phrasal entry looks like a sequence of English words paired with a sequence of foreign words. So this would be one example. So the basic idea is going to be to extract all possible phrase pairs which are consistent with the alignments on this particular example. So I could potentially take any sequence of words on the foreign side, so maybe these six words here, and any sequence of words on the English side, say these uh, four words here, and extract them as a phrase pair, as long as they are consistent with the alignments. We'll talk in a second about what it means to be consistent. So um, abstractly, we're going to consider all possible subsequences of words on the foreign side and all uh, possible subsequences of words on the English side and consider all possible pairings of those two choices. Okay, so how do we check if a potential phrasal entry is consistent with the alignment? So let me show you one alignment which is consistent and this is the phrase pair that pairs Maria no with Mary did not. And it's going to be useful to visualize this by drawing a rectangle in the figure corresponding to this particular pairing of these two phrases. Okay, so a phrase pair is consistent if three conditions are satisfied. So one, there has to be at least one word in the English phrase E aligned to word and F. So one of these three words has to be aligned to one of these two foreign words. And actually we have multiple alignments, okay, so we definitely satisfy this first condition. We actually have three cases where a word on, in the English side is aligned to a word on the foreign side. The second condition is that there are no words in F aligned to words outside E. Okay, So let's check this one by one. So if we look at Maria, we can see that all of its alignments are to words which are within this phrase we're proposing. So it's aligned actually only to Mary in this case, and that's within these three words that I'm considering. And similarly, if we look at the word no, it's um, only aligned to English words within this phrase, and so this second condition is uh, satisfied. It would be broken if there are any alignment points in these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 cells down here. So for example, if the, we also had an alignment here, then no would now be aligned to an English word which falls outside this subsequence, Mary did not, in which case the second constraint would be violated. But of course, that isn't present, so we're fine. Thirdly, it is a similar constraint saying that there are no words in the English side al aligned to words outside F. So if we could check these English words one by one, so Mary is only aligned to Maria, that's within the phrase we're considering. Did is only aligned to no, it's within the phrase we're considering. Not is aligned to no, so it's within the phrase we're considering. And so this phrase pair, Mary did not, Maria no, is uh, certainly consistent. And so this would actually be extracted, this phrase pair would be extracted from this training example. Let me show you one example of a phrase pair which isn't consistent. So Mary did and Mary no. So that's the pair here, Maria no, and then Mary did. And we can fill in this rectangle here. And this actually violates constraint 2 because this foreign word is aligned to not and not is outside um, this sequence of English words Mar Mary did. And so this is not a good phrase pair and it would not be extracted from, from this example. So notice that a very convenient way of visualizing these phrase pairs or the consistent ones is they correspond to rectangles I can draw which surround these alignments and for which we have no um, alignment points in the rows or columns outside this rectangle. So there are no alignment points in these cells here that corresponds to constraint 3 and there are no alignment points in these uh, columns here that corresponds to constraint number 2. So this is actually another perfectly well formed phrase did not slap can be no dabo and a buffetada and there are many other phrases, okay? So we can have Verdi aligned to green. So we can go through some single word alignments, or Maria to Mary. 
uh, Bruja to which, okay, so those are some single word um, phrases or translations. We can uh, translate the as Allah, that's another good one. And then there are larger phrases. So if we look at this rectangle here, we have uh, Bruja Verdi being aligned to Green Witch. And if we look at this case here, we have Allah Bruja Verdi. I'm sorry for my Spanish, I'm sure it's terrible. And uh, aligned to the Green Witch and so on and so on. So we'll get everything from single word translations to much longer uh, sequences. For example, this, these four Spanish words aligned to these three English words. And we do this on every training example. Okay, so from each training example, we're gonna get an English sentence paired with some foreign sentence, and we're going to extract um, a set of phrases from each training example. And you can see how what we're gonna end up with is a really pretty large lexicon of phrases, where the phrases consist of everything from single word correspondences like Bruja to which, to larger strings uh, such as this alignment here. Once we've extracted these phrases, we can also calculate parameter estimates based on the phrases we've extracted. And this is very simple, or at least this is the simplest way of doing this. Um, so for any pr ph phrase pair FE, for example, F might be this sequence, E might be a single word slap, um, we can derive a conditional probability of F given E as the ratio of these two counts. This looks just like the maximum likelihood estimates we've seen elsewhere in the course. So I can count the number of times I've seen this sequence corresponding to the word slap, count the number of times I've seen the English word slap, and take the ratio of these two terms. So this is the simplest possible way for estimating parameters of these models. It's a little dubious from a probabilistic point of view, I don't want to get into the details of that, but the fact we have multiple overlapping phrases on each training example makes this somewhat suspect, but empirically when we actually perform translation these parameters are very useful and actually work quite well uh, when used within a translation context. Here's actually an example from a tutorial by Philip Cohen from EACL 2006 which is a conference in natural language processing. Uh, here's an example he gave for uh, the French string den Vorschlag, which means, uh, roughly speaking, the proposal in English. And what I'm showing here, sorry, this should be T, not P, these are translation parameters, is a list of phrases that are extracted. So, for example, one phrase is this German sequence of words paired with the proposal. And the probability for this, the parameter, is about 0.62. Um, we have this funny looking phrase here, but this comes from something like the government's proposal. In that case, this has been extracted as a phrase. That's where this apostrophe S comes from. We have a proposal, we have the idea, we have this proposal, which have the word proposal, of the proposal. So you can see we have a whole bunch of phrases with varying probabilities. These are the probabilities of each of these phrases, and they look quite reasonable. This is a real example extracted from German-English data.